it's been quite some time, but we're finally back out here on Settler Creeks in the Hunter Classic, and we're kind of going for a two goal hunt. Of course, we're still looking for a 400 scoring Roosevelt Elk for our trophy lodge, but there are a couple of competitions running that I think we have a decent chance in. There's a Bobcat comp, a Cottontail Rabbit comp, and also a Feral Hog comp, and because of that, we kind of have a little bit of a different loadout. We have the 223 semi auto for the Bobcats. We actually have the 10 mil for the Feral Hogs, and we had to leave a lot of empty space. The Cottontail competition is one that I don't particularly like. It is a requirement to shoot the biggest Cottontail Rabbit from a ground blind. I don't currently have a non deployed ground blind in my inventory, so we fast traveled here. A Bull Elk is a really good sign. So we'll hunt here a little bit, and then we're going to head to our west. I really don't know why I have this set up, but there's a ground line over there that we can pick up on our way, and that should kind of get us set for rabbits. There's really none down in this area, so we're not likely to encounter one before we're ready. But who knows, maybe we'll have a good elk coming in before we get to that. So not the most impressive group of bulls to start this hunt. I think this guy is the best one at 175 to 220. Now you might be able to hear... We have the Bobcat Caller going as well. We had a... It's a call from one, but not the ones that you can identify. So it's hard to say. It could be a male, could be a female. And quite frankly, it is probably going to get spooked by the elk that are running off. We also have a Whitetail Buck calling, so we'll try to bring that in too. That'll give us time. If somehow that Bobcat doesn't spook, maybe it can come in. But the other requirement for the Bobcat is it has to be taken with the 223 semi-auto from a tree stand or a blind or a tower or anything like that. So because we're set up in a tree stand and because this spot actually has a bobcat color just sitting out here, I don't even have to take the one from the inventory, it's worth a shot to see if it comes in. We've somehow managed to even get some more elk under the tree stand and I can't imagine the first herd has gotten unspooked already. So they should be other elk, but our buck is here. Not that big at 85 to 110 and we're going with the tree stand spine shot again with the cable back bow. I just find that to be kind of the safest shot to avoid any potential tracking. Of course, the cable back's not maybe as powerful as some other bows, so even a what would, would be a routine broadside double lung shot sometimes ends up single lung and you have to track them down. But one thing there was no sign of was a bobcat. I think that must have spooked off with the herd of elk, but now that is interesting. A max weight elk track, but it's not the first one I picked up. That would almost indicate the bugle we got was from a max weight one. Maybe that one never got here. That's going to take us in the opposite direction as the blind, but I think we got to go and try to see what that is. Well, that isn't what we're tracking. A 170 to 190 whitetail down there. I guess we'll try to call him in. We're not too far behind the elk, and of course there's a feral hog somewhere a little closer to us, so we'll have to be careful. I'm tempted to start calling for the elk too, but the thing that I don't want is to end up having them both come in and then having to choose and, and have one get away, so I guess we'll try to get the buck here and pick up the elk's tracks in a minute. I knew this could easily be the type of thing that kind of derails a hunt, but I can't complain if it leads us to a potential really good buck. The closer he gets, the more I think he's probably like a 172 or 174 despite the good estimate. But even still, especially for settlers, that'll put him fairly high on our list of best bucks from this map. A lot of times we don't even eclipse 170. Now, an important thing here is going to be trying to drop him. That will certainly help us out. And that's only going to maybe delay us like two or three minutes on the elk track. So as long as we don't spook that feral hog, which is somewhere down in that general area. I don't know exactly where it went after it passed through there. We should be all good from getting a little bonus deer. Left lung and liver. Luckily, we even dropped him. And a 171.8. So right about as expected. Not exactly what we're after, but definitely nice. And considering we have no idea what we're getting into with this elk. It's nice that it got us something good regardless. It might well have been worth the time put in. 325 to 370 on that guy. I'm kind of strongly considering the 10 mil though. There's no competition running for Roosevelt Elk right now, at least not one that we entered. 
we actually won a competition on this map for elk with a 394. So I'm not as worried about them. I think the elk comp was like your lowest scoring one or something like that. So I wasn't as interested in that. But you may recall I mentioned something like this could derail a hunt. I would say it pretty well has done that. It's now after 8 o'clock in game. We've been following him for quite some time, but as I said, I think it has been well worth the time put in. Definitely a really good elk. If he keeps coming this way and I have not called, we could try to hit him with the cable back bow. I mean, we might as well. Coming well into bow range, I just saw that sticker off his main beam there on the right side. He spotted us super fast, but I think that's going to be a lung hit. All that time. All that tracking, but at least it was not like a 280 or something like that. That ends up being a body hit. Could have been the range, could have been a shoulder blade shot or something like that. But we'll just kind of take it slow. We could call in that hog, but I think we'll just kind of start creeping this way. And maybe if something else shows up along the way, we can take that and kind of spend a little bit of this time that we got to wait getting something in the process. He's not exactly huge, but an opportunity to kill a little time. I'm kind of thinking... Unless he just presents a perfect shot, we really should go 10 mil here. I think we better. I really don't want to end up tracking two different animals. The elk should be down by now. We really kind of took our time. But the last thing I want is for the elk to be down and then having to track the buck for another 10 minutes or so. We still haven't gone and grabbed a ground blind yet to go and try to get some rabbits with that. And by the way, our loadout is not set up well for that. In theory, we want something like the 17 HMR or the 22 Plinkington. Maybe we'll switch it up once we grab the blind. Because really, we're not going to get a blind set up and then shoot a cottontail with the cable back bow in all likelihood. So we'll kind of see, but at least we should be good to go and find our bull now. I just want to point out, we've been hunting for an hour and a half. We have five kills counting the elk. And something that was supposed to happen 20 minutes in, in grabbing that ground blind, we're farther away from that than we were when we started, but I think it was all worth it. A 355 bull, there are plenty of elk hunts in which we don't accomplish that. 23 minute wound time, I'm glad we waited as long as we did. We're not going to tax that, we'll definitely take a trophy shot, but I'm kind of considering switching up our strategy just a little bit. We'll see if we can get a decent picture here and... We are not in the best area, but definitely can't complain about a bull that big, especially when he's got three stickers at least. So he's easily in the class of 370 without them. In fact, I think there are five stickers and it's hard to even show them all. We got one down here, two inside by the back tines there, one here and one here on the main beam. I mean, I want to go and see the gross score of this bull. It's got to be pretty solid. Definitely a good one to take off of Settler's Creeks. But, uh, as I mentioned, I'm kind of thinking we should switch it up. If we go back here, we're kind of maybe not being as efficient as we could be to cover as much of the map as possible. So what we're going to do instead is fast travel to this tent, go and get this ground blind, and then try to go from there. And I guess one kill before we take the ground blind down actually a pretty nice feral hog. Now the problem is, the feral hog competition is kind of similar to the elk comp. It's the lightest weight one shot with the 10 millimeters. So this one, despite being a pretty nice hog, is not going to help us out. There was a female coming in. It actually is not the lightest male. It's lightest hog in general. So female would be what we're after, but that was actually a pretty good one. And I thought we'd go ahead and take that. It was 910 to 1010. By the way, I don't know if the text in the spotting box is a little bit odd. I've had that happen before and I think it has something to do with my resolution and the fact that I switched PCs. I also can't remember how to fix it, but hopefully we can get that solved if it does look a little bit odd. 980 though, not too bad. And now we finally have our ground blind, so we'll see if we can somehow set that up and maybe look into tweaking our loadout for rabbits a bit. So finally, we're armed with our 17 HMR. And we have the ground blinds in our inventory, and I kind of think most likely those that consistently place or win this competition probably have ground blinds set up in good areas, but I kind of wonder 
when a rabbit goes to hide, can they be spooked by placing a blind? That's kind of the first thing I want to know. Because if you can get them to hide and then place the blind, it might just work. And that looks like it's going to be effective. Now, ground blinds, they do have a spook radius, much like shooting a rifle. Although a lesser spook radius, I think shooting a rifle would be 200 meters right about render distance. Or I guess 300 meters it would be now. Versus a ground blind is either 100 or 150, I want to say. Now, we didn't even kill him with that. I don't think a single shot is necessary. Both of those coming from the blind should be fine. But because it seems that we should be able to hopefully spook a rabbit into a position where we can see it from a distance and then set up the blind, we should be able to kind of take advantage of some of the more open areas. My concern was, if that wouldn't work, we were going to have to try to spot rabbits like 150 meters away or maybe from up high where some of the grass could be rendered in and not really in our way. That puts us in second place. Now, a 1274 rabbit is obviously quite small. They max at 1999, so we definitely want to do a little bit better. I do think this competition in general probably does not get as much participation as others. So even at that low score, we might have odds of sticking in, like, say, the top five, but I want to get... I don't know, a 16 or 1700 plus to really feel somewhat confident that we could end up being top three. Really, any rabbit competition is going to be a little bit odd. There are competitions, kind of like the elk comp that I mentioned earlier, where it's the lowest score or the lightest weight or something like that. I'm really not as interested in those comps because it feels like I want to win competition trophies for trophy animals, not just doing a particular weird thing better than others, but with the rabbits. Lots of competitions work this way, and it feels a little more valid, I guess, to get a rabbit in that way with the blind and, and win a competition and therefore some EM in the process. I'm not saying we're going to get this one, but 1600 to 1900 would be basically the possible estimates on a 1.6 to 1.9 kg rabbit. Now, what we see as the score estimate most likely won't be that, but given the weight that's going to be the possible scores, and that kind of is in that range of what I'd consider acceptable to kind of stop hunting for and hope that we could get a, a competition trophy with it. That right there is our rabbit. I think it only went up to 1670 on the estimate, so it must be right in that area. Is it going to stop right there by the rocks? That's kind of what I was hoping for. I don't know how well we'll be able to see to actually get a shot in there, but if we can get the blind set up, and maybe I should have marked that before doing so, we should at least have a shot at this. Hopefully he's still going to be there. Or she actually, I think that was a, a female. Usually it is the female rabbits that score higher. I don't see it. Unless, oh no, it was by those rocks, it is still there. So before it tries to go anywhere, the 17 basically has no drop. We're going to try to get this kind of up by the head. Or at least close-ish to where we can get a, a one-shot kill this time, because I don't think we're getting two opportunities at that range. Kind of tough to get it centered, but at least that's a hit. I don't know if it's going to be a lethal hit, which could be a problem, but I guess better than not getting a shot at all. I think it actually was enough to bring him down. I'm pretty sure this little cone was visible from too far away for it to not have been a downed animal. So we kind of lucked out. 1.7 kg, it'll be above 1650 then. Gotta be below 1700. And we may be stuck in a looping score. There we go, 1662. Kind of sucks when it was 1.6 to 1.9 kg, but definitely not too bad. That actually leaves us in second place. So when we started this hunt, first was 1253, I think. We'll go and take a look. I actually forgot to look at the elk's uh, growth score anyway, so we'll check both of those things out and see where we're at, and in the meantime, we'll kind of keep on scooting down through some of the open areas and see if we can hit another heavy track. So before I forget, the elk was a 381 gross scorer, so pretty unfortunate we had five stickers there to take away from that, but still a really nice bull. As for the rabbit, I think first place was 1770, something like that, so not too far off where we were. One heavy track could kind of shift things, but... We'll see what we run into. We are two hours and 40 minutes into this hunt, so 
Maybe in the next 20 minutes, if we can find a heavy rabbit track or something else to go after, we'll take that, and probably whatever our next kill is will be our last. As a bit of what you might call a last resort, after planning on spending 20 more minutes looking and ending up spending 40, I came back here to where we started the hunt. It was the location of what would have been a 355 elk from the stand, if not for the fact that he ended up spooking before we saw him. And we do have another whitetail buck coming in, and just because we're in a tree stand, there's no reason to rush this. We'll get him in good and close, try to get one last cable back bow kill for our totals. I think we should be over 400 after last week's stream and today's hunt. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think that is going to be the case. So we'll try to get this guy square under the stand to just make sure we're not doing another long track. And all in all today, a 170 whitetail buck, a 355 elk with a 380 gross score, and at least a potential at placing in a cottontail rabbit competition. I'm pretty sure that one's still got time, if I'm not mistaken, even by the time this video comes out, there should be a little bit of time remaining on that one, so we'll kind of see, maybe we'll get lucky and end up placing still. I know it's not one of the species that a ton of people participate in the comps for, in fact, I think the two entries, first and second place, us being in second, are the only two right now, and uh, who knows how long that is going to last, but pretty good hunt overall on Settlers Creeks, and good to see the variety and especially to do a competition that we really haven't done much before. I, I found that interesting with the ground blind. That might be something we work on more down the road next time the competition is active. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.